church, your Bible tells you, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Show God some love. Come on, praise God. Hallelujah. How are we doing this morning, Christ for Life Ministries? Everyone good? Are you good? Praise God. Praise God. I just want us to go into God's presence this morning with worship, with thanksgiving. If you know how to speak in tongues, I encourage you to do that. Because the Bible says that you should lift up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Spirit of the living God, we welcome you here. We just ask for your presence this morning. We ask for your power, your power, your glory. Manifest yourself again this morning. Where the Spirit is, there is fullness of joy. At His right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. The spirit of the living God Do your thing this morning Take the glory, take the honor, take the worship Because it is due you Lord, we just lift you up Above our fears, above our cares, above our anxieties We just lift you high You said if you are lifted up, you will draw men to yourself Daddy, would you just draw men to yourself this morning Would you just lift up your name, your glory that you may be manifest in this place. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We just worship you. We bless you. We thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 6 says, verse 3, And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Holy is the Lord. Much less is the Lord. Powerful is the Lord. The whole earth is full of his glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Holy is the Lord. And that's the person we're worshiping today. The Most High. The Most High. He is holy. And we're going into his presence with worship, just lifting his name, just praising him because he deserves it. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. How many of you like reggae in the house? Yes! I want you to guys to move with me. Come on! Like Glory, holy is the Lord God. 
joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down, we bow down, and worship him now. How great, how awesome is he, and holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth he is, is filled with oh, oh, holy is the Lord, oh, holy.
about our devices. We're not thinking about our challenges. We're not thinking about what's waiting for us out there. We just give you the adoration. We just give you our attention. We just give you our time. God, we just lay it all at your feet. We lay it all. We lay it all. We lay it all at your feet. Glorify your name, God. In our midst this morning, glorify your name. Lift your praise up high, God. Lift your name up high. Glorify your name again. Do it again. Do it again. God, it's you that we want. We want more of you. More of your spirit. More of your power. More of your anointing. God, you, you're all we want. We're all we need. We're all we want, God. You're all we need, God. You're all we want, God. You're all we need, God. You're all we want, God. You're all attention God we give you our time God we give you our lives God you're all we want and you are worthy of it all 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 of our time of our attention of our praise of our life you are worthy God Do you are all things with me. 
Father God, to magnify and glorify what you have done for us. And truly, oh God, thank you for loving us. Thank you, God. Now we have eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now we have fullness of joy. Now we are being housed by the Holy Spirit. Now we have the anointing of God. Now we have the power of God. Now we have, we have the authority of your word. Thank you, Jesus, oh God. Now we are children of the light, no longer children of darkness. Now we've been set free from condemnation, from the wrath that is about to be poured out to this earth. Now we can rejoice and worship you. Father, 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 Father God, we're not fixing our eyes on what's going on around the world right now. But we are fixing our eyes on our redemption that is drawing near. God, we're not worried. We're not anxious. What's going on around the world right now? What's going on around our, around our lives, oh God, our families? But we are focusing our, our eyes on you, on your coming back. God, we want to thank you. God, we want to praise you. That your coming is eminent. It's eminent. It's without notice. It's without warning. And as children of God, we have to get ready, Lord. God, we want to thank you, Father God, that our salvation is sure. That your revelation of the clouds, oh God. God, we want to thank you today, Lord. God, help your people to get ready. Help your people to be prepared, oh God. Not just for our future on earth, but for our future in heaven, oh God. God, time, the clock is ticking. For the end times is coming. Lord God Almighty. But greater is He who is in us. Come on, church. Greater is He who is in us than He who is in this world. God, we want to praise you today, Father. Because we will hear your encouraging, inspiring word, oh God. They are powerful. And you will encourage your people today, Father. We want to thank you today. Be glorified. Be magnified in our midst, Lord Jesus. We are here for nothing else, oh God. We are here for your presence. 
Because your presence is really what counts. Your presence is really what counts. Because we can be experiencing the most terrible things in this world. But your presence what really is really what really counts, oh God. Because it gives us peace. It gives us joy. It gives us contentment. God, anoint your speaker today, Father. Anoint each, every, each and every one of us today. Don't let that fire, oh God, be quenched. Don't let that fire in you be quenched. Let it ablaze. Ask for more oil. Keep me oil in my lump. Keep me burning. Church, can we say that? Give me oil in my lump. Keep me burning. Come on, say it. Give me oil in my lump. Keep me burning. And all the people of God said. And all the people of God said. Come on, give me praise. Give me praise. We have to go straight to the word right now. So, uh, God's mouthpiece has to get ready. Children, please exit uh, silently. Praise God. Now you're so... Strike the iron while it is hot. <laughs> we have to strike the iron while it's still hot. Amen? Amen. Okay. Where is our speaker? There he is. The handsome guy. Go, lips, go. <laughs> Let's go say hi to one another, guys. Don't worry. Come on. We're going to stand one, two, three. And we're going to say hi to people. No, we're gonna... Yes, this be your kid. You can head to the back already. That's okay. But welcome to today. All right, take your time for a second. back slowly it's okay oh man good morning church good morning Christ for life and how is everybody today blessed and highly favored well welcome to today we're gonna get right into it so if you're listening if you're here today at church, you guys have all come for the same reasons 
we have. We're actually here to learn more about God. We're here for each other. How many of you like the people here? How many of you don't know? That's okay. We'll fix that. Uh, we're here for each other, and we're here to be encouraged, not discouraged. Amen? All right. So right now, I'm going to get you to say something nice to whoever you're sitting next to. Come on. Say one thing nice to whoever you're next to. Something nice. Something nice. It could be one thing. It could be two things. Nice to see you. I heard that one. I like that one. <laughs> I like that one. It's good to see all of you today. That is the honest truth. God knows why you're here today. And God has a reason for why you are here today. The other week, we got to talk about where and when to use our hope. Who do we hope in, church? We hope in Jesus. Why should we hope in Jesus? Because hoping in Jesus brings endurance. Hoping in Jesus shapes our character. How many of you want to be a good character? And it's a hope we're not ashamed of. It's a hope that brings us pure joy in the hardest of times. I, I, I deleted the slide because we have a lot to go through, but it's endure to hope, and we hope to endure, and your hope will shape your character. But your supernatural hope in Jesus will bring you joy, and it will make you rejoice. We're, we're going to be talking about a little bit about rejoicing today. It will make you praise God during the hard times. How many of you have had hard times? How many of you want to be in a good mood during the hard times? That's exactly it. Our hope is in Jesus, and the devil can never win that battle. How many of you enjoyed my dad last week? We got to discuss the importance. I know I wasn't here, so I had to watch the YouTube clip. I was in the back taking care of the kids. But we, we got to discuss the importance of slowing down your pace. How many of you like to rush to things? How many of you are rushing to lunch after this? How many of you know your lunch will be at 2 p.m. today? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But it's, it's, it's the importance of slowing down your, your pace, and it's not, you're not slowing down the pace in this race to the kingdom, but slowing down our day-to-day -day lives to pray more and to pray more intentionally. How many of you want to pray with reason? Creating that space to rest, to let go of the luggage when we're already on board. I like that. Putting, put it down. How many of you are carrying your carry-on on the plane? No, you put it down. You put it up or it down. When you're laying it all down before our God, you'll realize it's a weight that we were never meant to carry. Then our hope increases, our faith increases, our love increases. How many of you are ready for your faith, hope, and love to increase in your life today? And it's not, be gonna, it's not gonna be because of me, I'm only a servant. It's gonna be because of the word of God and the promise God has on your life. I am, I am no one special but the servant before you, that's it. I'm on this stage because you won't see me if I go down here. That is the only reason for the platform. I gave you guys a really nice slide today. This is probably my favorite slide I've made in a long time. This is the entire passage we're reading all in very nice form. And I'm going to read it right here out of the Bible. It's going to be 1 Thessalonians 5. We're going to start at verse 16. It's already on the screen, and it's broken up into three parts for you already. It says, rejoice always. Come on together. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus for you. Come on, let's read it again. We, don't got, we, we have time. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. 
For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. How many of you love that today? Come on, let's pray real quick. Father, we want to say thank you for today. Thank you for an opportunity to learn more about you today. Thank you for an opportunity to sit with our neighbors today. Thank you for getting out, getting us out of bed when we are tired. Thank you for healing us if we were feeling sick. Thank you for giving us strength to rise today. Father, we are here for you. We are all here for you. May we just come together in our uniqueness to build up your name. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, everyone says, amen. We're going to read it again. Rejoice always. Pray continually. That's what the middle one says. And this is give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. We're doing memory verses today. Because it's important to memorize scripture in your life. And before you think, oh, I got the Bible on my phone, I mean, you and I know McDonald's slogan, we know the fast food slogans, you can memorize a little scripture. Just like remembering great, great, <laughs> just like remembering great quotes that inspire you, remember that the word of God can inspire you like nothing else. God will inspire you like nothing and no one else can. So we read again, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks, there you go, made a really nice slide today, and the cool part is when, when we're talking about highlighting and remembering stuff that you read in the Bible, uh, when you do it on the application, you can actually just make these yourself. And you can keep them. You can print them in your own home. But don't forget to draw and write in your own Bible also. That will help with memorization. We study here. Highlight. It will help you remember. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus in you. What verse is this? What book? <laughs> yes, five what? Oh, man. Can I be honest with you? I think there's real moments where praying is really easy. How many of you have said easy prayers? Easy prayers. I think there's moments in life where prayers are really easy, and I think there's moments in life where praying is really hard. I think there's moments where we're afraid to pray. Praying for a good parking spot, praying for good weather, praying you don't gain weight after the foods you eat. These are all easy prayers. And then when push comes to shove, when we're praying that something that's truly beyond ourselves, I think for some of us it's the hard time to pray. I think it's hard to pray in those hard times. I remember my grandma in the hospital. If you, if you relate to these stories of any hospital visit, it's a hard time to pray. Sometimes all you want to do is pray, but, but what, are we, what are we doing in that moment? I remember crying in my bedroom, and that's all I did. I didn't pray. I would just cry. I would watch TV. Anyone relate? When you have problems in life, you watch TV shows. You do something else. You do retail therapy, grocery therapy. You eat your problems away. But it's not praying. You're avoiding it. I don't know what will happen if I pray this prayer. If I pray this prayer, I don't know what will happen. Anyone been there? I don't know what's going to happen. When we get into those moments in life where we're afraid to pray and we're afraid to admit that it's bigger than ourselves because it's not in our control to begin with. When we're being afraid in these moments, it's a realization that it's time to submit to God 
and his will, even though he's always good. How many of you know our God's always good? But how many of you know we have our own version of good that we want for ourselves? It will never measure up to the goodness God wants to pour in your life. And it's hard for us to see that in the moment because, A, we're human. B, we have real emotions. And C, it's okay to have these real emotions. These emotions are real. Ask your neighbor and be honest. Have you ever been afraid to pray? Have, in your whole life, have you ever been afraid to pray? If you're, if you're already a prayer warrior, first of all, we love you. If you're already a prayer warrior and you're in this house today, I encourage you to share that, in, that experience in your life to others. To inspire others to pray like you, not exactly like you, but to help build good habits in others. One of the most famous preachers to ever touch the stage always said he wished he prayed more. And we looked to him very highly. And he wanted to pray more? If you are a prayer warrior, don't keep your prayer habits a secret. Don't be prideful that you pray more. Share, because we're learning too. How many of you are learning about God? How many of you are learning every day? Yeah. How many of you know we're barely a fraction to getting to know our God? Not because he's just big, but because that's just how great he is. We're better together, church. We're better when we do life together. Have you ever been afraid to pray? I have. What if God doesn't answer it? Remember those questions? What if I don't get things my way? It says rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Say all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This is where we step in faith. We step in what? We step in faith with our God. Just like any relationship. We don't get into it because we know absolutely everything. I love my wife. I don't know absolutely everything about her. I'm trying to. But I didn't get married because I knew absolutely everything. I got into it for the potential at what it could be someday. So when you're in your relationship with God, when you're committing to God in a relationship, it only gets better. The potential of what it will be and can be will be all up to us. You are a better follower today because God did not answer every prayer. Sorry, because God did answer every prayer, even if it wasn't the result we wanted it to be. The truth is, church, God does answer every prayer. It's a yes, I have something better, or not now. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That's why we have to stay rejoicing, even in the hard times. That's why we have to keep praying, even if it's not the result we want. It has to align with God's will. It's got to align with God's word. We're not just praying to God because he's a magical genie. We're praying for guidance and strength and courage to get through our situation. In the movie your kids were watching last week, there's a, there a cute little quote um, from God, the person playing God. And it's, 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 if you're praying for perseverance, does God give you perseverance or is, does God give you the chance to persevere? God's giving you these chances to persevere, to get, to be, to get courageous in this situation. 
gives you an opportunity to persevere, an opportunity to be courageous, an opportunity to be strong when you're feeling weak. That's why we keep praying even if it's not the result we want. We give thanks, and it takes a lot for us to rejoice and give thanks during a hard time. That, church, inspires hope in your life in all circumstances. You are, you are being mature in your situation. You are learning in your situation. No matter how hard it is, no matter how bad it looks, our God is still good. Like the child we are to God our Father, our Father knows best. But, the fa- but our Father will always give us an opportunity to be great and not so we're great, but Greater is he within me. When Paul and Silas, and I had to break this down because I didn't know how to say it. When Paul and Silas visit Thessalonica, a Greek city, that's where Thessalonians comes from. They go and tell them about Jesus. They tell this city about Jesus. And they start a church, a great church there. But the church does so well that Caesar himself gets upset that there's another Lord they're worshiping. There's another king on the throne, and Caesar believes they're defying him. So what Caesar does is he persecutes the Christians there in Thessalonica. Paul and Silas get persecuted so bad that they leave the city. But guess what? Even though it's tough to have a church there, It's flourishing even when they leave. The church is doing well. It sounds like any church here in Saga or the GTA, we're always getting persecuted. We're always finding ways to butt heads with other churches, with other beliefs. Or it feels like we're always the odd ones out in the conversation. But church, let me tell you, Jesus still has the victory over here in Mississauga. Church buildings can close down, but Jesus will remain. The people of Jesus will remain. We will never turn over, no matter who's ruling the world or the country, because we know who sits on the throne. And they've been trying to overthrow Christianity and Jesus for thousands of years, and yet here we stand, not because we're just strong, but because we love our enemy. We are different, and we take different approach to the headbutts, to the hardships. We rejoice in the hardships. We pray continually for our cities and our nations and our rulers. You might, ha- you might not be the biggest Justin Trudeau fan, but how many of you know that it's good to pray for him? You might not be a big fan of your family member or your friend's friend. But how many of you know that's who we're here for? Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus for you. Come on, church. This is not just for me. Rejoice always. Come on. Pray without ceasing. Oh, thank you. Okay. This is an encouragement that that they write throughout the persecution, throughout the hardship in life. Don't give up, brother. Don't give up, sister. God has a hold on your life, and he's going to take care of you. But I know, church, the more you pray, the more you stay with with God's vision for you. And the more you don't pray, the more you stray little rhyme there. The more, the more you pray, the more you stay. The more you don't pray, the more you stray. But guess what? What makes our God, which makes our God so great is when we do stray away and it happens, he's going to be right there waiting for you. But church, I'm here to tell you, don't let it go there. Don't let it go there. Come home to our Father today and watch his goodness and his promises on your life come to life. 
come to you. Church, fix your hope. Fix your hope and focus on Jesus. You know, it's cool. Even the, the passage before, uh, before chapter 5, it talks about, it, I, I know it just says, rejoice always, pray continually. You're like, why? Why, would, why, do you wanna, why, do we, why should we be like that? And this is what they write before. They write that we should be reliable. Can you look at your neighbor and say, be reliable? For, okay, for all of those who don't a- answer text messages, say, be reliable. <laughs> That's me too, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> be reliable. Come on, say it. Be reliable. That means hardworking. That means going beyond what society wants from you. I remember working at Apple years ago. I can't believe it's been a few years now. I remember working at Apple years ago, and literally one of my employees on my second week there was like, why are you so nice to everybody? Everybody that knows me here, they're like, what are they talking about? I'm just kidding. (laughs) They're like, why are you so nice to everybody? And my honest response in front of 20 people was, there's way too much hate in the world. Why would I contribute to that? That was my honest answer. And he's like, he's like, that was good. And then left. And like, I had to laugh. I thought it was funny. But Paul writes this, not just randomly. Paul writes this because he wants, he wants all of us to be reliable. Reliable Christians. How many of you want to be a reliable Christian? How many of you want, if you are the only Christian or a Christian in your family group, in your friend group, how many of you want to be reliable How many of you stray away because, oh, you're the Christian. You have to pray for the food at the party. Do you stray away or do you be reliable? This is a little thing. You're praying for food. This is an easy prayer. What are the hard prayers? The hard prayers is when my dad and I will visit hospitals and he goes, can you pray? And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I'm nervous. Those are hard, but my dad knows that I'll pray because I'm trying to be reliable also. The call to be a reliable Christian isn't just for these pastors and people who touch the stage here. It's for everyone here in this building. Everyone watching at home trying to be a better version of themselves. Don't you want to be a reliable Christian? You don't make it into professional sports because you're okay. You make it because you're a reliable player. Be reliable Christians. And this will come naturally. Rejoicing always. How many of you want to be the positive attitude during a hard situation? Pray continually. How many of you want prayer to be the answer in your friends and family? And you, you turn your family going, hey, we should pray right now. And even though it's weird for them, they see you shine this light inside of you. That's not your own. That little light of mine, is that's Jesus. How many of you want to pray continually when your family goes, what do we do? Our family member is dying. Our, our, our brother and sister is straying away. What do we do? Church, the most powerful thing you can do for one another is to pray for one another. But don't get it twisted. Stop praying to these rocks and these other new stuff. Our God is the only one that will provide and deliver. If you are praying to something or someone else and they deliver, that's bringing you away from Jesus and you are going to be as far as heaven as possible. There's only two. There's only two. You want to do the most extreme bad and the most extreme good? The most extreme good is Jesus. And the most extreme bad is somewhere we don't pray for anyone else to be. 
the best and the most and to be the best and most loving employee to be a true representation of Christ inside you not to be little people but to inspire when you're inspiring church when you're being a reliable christian to inspire and bring everyone together did you know jesus came to bring everyone together not bring everyone apart if you are using jesus to bring people apart be more reliable and bring them together rejoice always come on let's say it church rejoice always Pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Following Jesus, and, 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 Paul and Paul and Silas knew this. This is the coolest part about this book, is Paul and Silas knew how controversial it would be, how culture-changing it would be to follow Jesus, to get a group and to get a city of people to follow Jesus. Paul and Silas knew how drastic the world would be when you follow Jesus. And their response is to love those who persecute you. That's why the church stayed during the persecution of Caesar. How many of you know Caesar? How many of you know it's your salad? Is That's how powerful that guy was. Okay? The guy was so powerful... It's, your, it's a free salad on your entree. Just kidding. No one's eating out these days. It's too expensive. <laughs> but it's true. This is, how, this is how much influence Caesar had. Yet, the church was flourishing when the two best leaders left because they were reliable Christians to not just each other, but to their city. Amen? They were praying about everything. Church, pray for everything. How many of you are praying you wake up tomorrow? Oh, you guys are laughing. How many of you praying your kids wake up tomorrow? These are, the, these are easy prayers, right? I pray for my family all the time. I pray my sister and Travis are safe in Japan. Right? I pr pray for everything. How many of you are praying that you get home safe today? How many of you are praying you have lunch today? How many of you are praying? I just got my credit card statement in my email. How many of you are praying you can get pay for your credit card? <laughs> they literally sent it this morning. It's not fun. <laughs> Praying little prayers is important. Praying big prayers is important. Praying with everything is important. Praying while reading your Bible is important. Praying after reading your Bible is important. Praying for everything is important. Praying is better than not praying. Okay? Praying is better than not praying. And it's funny because, because there's some of us who, who are highly intellectual, and I respect you, and you go, but God knows everything. Why do I need to pray? That's okay. God knows everything. Why do I need to pray? Can I be honest with you? My wife knows way more than I ever will. Does that mean I should stop talking to her? No, thank you. That's really good advice. Very, I take that. Should I stop talking to her because she knows more than me? Will that make my relationship better? No. She'll beat me up. <laughs> no communication will destroy your relationships. No communication will destroy your relationships. So, okay. If, if the Christian, if the over, overzealous, over awesome Christian in your life wants to be a part of your life, but you don't want to talk to them, will that make you a better Christian when you hang out with non-Christians? These are just basics, church. 
Will it make any relationship better? Communication is key to all relationships, including the one you have with God. The communication you have with God is key to this relationship. We're not a religion, we're a relationship. Yes, yes, we are. It's personal. It's everything to us. It's everything to us. So here's, here's what we're going to do for the rest of, the rest of the service or the next part of service. We're going to give you an opportunity to pray. When was the last time you prayed? Ask yourself this question. Just yourself. We're not here to point fingers. When was the last time you took real time to pray that wasn't for your food, that wasn't for your parking spot? When was the last time you had real time to pray? We're going to give you that time this morning. Is that okay? You don't have to worry who you're with. You don't have to worry who's around you. We are a small church, but as you look around, we have space if you want your own space. We want to give you an opportunity to, to pray. Uh, John, do you mind playing keys? Cool, cool. Actually, I don't know if he said, okay, he said yes. Okay. <laughs> but here's what, here's what we're going to do. We, we, were, we were talking, and we're going to guide you through some of the prayer today just so you're not sitting there in silence listening to how good John is. We're going to get you to sit there or stand, and we want to guide you through prayers that will help in enrich your life. We can always pray for you. We love doing that. But church, how many of you know it's time for you to pray? It's time for you to be, hey, this goes for me too. Or I'm not here calling anybody out. It's time for all of us to be more reliable as Christians. That we're not just good at being Christian on a Sunday. That we're being reliable on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And Sunday we come to refuel. Come on, church, however you want to pray, whether it's standing, closing your eyes, if you want some space right now, you could do it. You can just let the, the, the music set the mood for you, but we're going to guide you through the prayer. Every great prayer starts with being grateful to God. Amen. Every great prayer starts with being grateful to God. Church, what are you grateful for today? Come on, just it's just you and God. I'm just here trying to guide it. What are you grateful for? Come on, thank him. Thank you, God, for my family. Thank you for another day. Come on, just start praying for, for anything, for being healthy. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my friends. Come on, church, let's start being grateful to God. You can use your voice. You can use your silence. God is here. Come on, let's talk to God today. Let's be grateful. Father, I want to say thank you for today's service. I want to thank you for my parents. I want to thank you for my cousins. I want to thank you for this church that is growing is growing for a desire to make Mississauga a Jesus city. Come on, church. What are you grateful for today? Come on, thank him. Thank you, Jesus. It starts like that. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, think about it. What are you grateful for today? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the breath in my lungs. Thank you for these people here, whether it's their first time or they're just starting to call this place their home. Thank you for these people that are calling this place their new home. Now, church, after you're done being thankful, I want you to think about how good he is in your life. 
thank you for being so good. Church, our God is so good. Let's think about his goodness right now. If you need to encourage your neighbor, go ahead. Think about his goodness right now. He's so good. He's given us another opportunity at life today. He's so good that we can come to church without missiles and bombs. He's so good that we live. I know gas prices are high, but we're safe. We're here to worship God freely. God, thank you for being so good to bring our families here. For us to be here. Come on, you are so good. Thank you for loving me for the times we haven't loved you. Thank you for loving us for all the times we cursed you. Come on, let's think about how good he is right now. Now here's a big one. Because church, whenever you pray, it's important to repent of your sins. It's important to ask for forgiveness. And when we do this church, we will be pure in his sight. Come on, let's ask for forgiveness today. Jesus, come forgive us. Come forgive me. Come on, if you want to be specific, out loud you can. If you want to be quiet, you can. Come on, I want you to, we want you to be intentional and authentic when you mean it. God, forgive me for my sin. Break these chains, break these dark, break the darkness with light. Come on, repent and be pure in his eyes, church. Don't be afraid. If you ask for forgiveness from our God, when you repent of your sins, there will be no record of it in heaven anymore. You will walk out of here sinless. We ask for forgiveness right now, Father. We ask for forgiveness for all the times, for every time that we've disobeyed you, that we that we sin knowingly, we sin unknowingly, Father. Make us better and make us pure in, in your sight right now. Father, we ask for repentance all around the room right now. We ask for hearts of repentance right now. Give us a heart of forgiveness. Help us to forgive others. Come on, church, if there's someone that you need to forgive, whether it's big or small, Give it to God and let's forgive them together. God, give us, if you forgive us, Father, help us to forgive others. And what they've done to us, what we've done to them, help us forgive ourselves. May we be better in your sight and in theirs. Come on, take a minute. you're ready this is what else we're going to start praying for this is where this is where i know when we talk to you guys we have a real heart for when you're ready it's time to start praying for others for your friends for your family come on say their names say god i pray for and you can say their name you can say their their name it doesn't matter come on God, I pray for my friend. God, I pray for my sister. God, I pray for my brother, my cousin, my uncle, my auntie. Come on, come on. Let's pray for our families right now. I pray for my family. I pray for my friends that don't know you. May you soften their heart. We pray for them. We pray for every family member that is sick. We pray for every friend that is sick. We pray that you reveal yourself to them in an amazing way. Father, we pray for all our families right now and our friends. Come on, say their names. Say their names. Don't be shy. You love them, right? Or we wouldn't be praying for them. Father, I pray for my cousins. Father, I pray for some of my friends. Father, I pray for the, the, the people that we're getting to know here at this church. 
we lift up to you them and their families right now as we as we get to know more of your people, Father. We are so grateful for the new members of this church, for the new families at this church. We pray for them. Come on, take another minute to pray for your family and friends. Say their name. Don't be shy. Be bold in your prayer. Rejoice, church. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you ready, church? Your last prayer is just for you. Start praying to God about what's weighing, weighing heavy on your heart. It's time to pray for ourselves, church. Father, I come to you humbly. May I be a more reliable Christian. Come on, pray for yourself right now. Father, we want more vision from you. We want to be more reliable. We want to be more courageous for you. We want to be more courageous so we can come together in our uniqueness. We can make a body. Come on, church, start to pray for yourself. Don't be shy. Ask God for some healing. Ask God to heal your heart from past hurts. Father, help us move on from any hurt that is lingering on our life. Father, if there's any hurting, if there's any depression, if there's any darkness from the past life, Father, help us move on. We pray for depression to be gone. We pray for mental health to be healthy. But not by the world's standards of healthy. It may be healthy because we rejoice in you. May we be more reliable. Father, may we be better servants for you. Father, we accept you as our Lord and Savior. We pray for boldness in your people, Father. We pray for courageousness. We pray for strength. We pray to be wise and not just to be smart. Father, may you help all of us become wiser today. May we not be the smartest in the room, but the wisest. But may our wisdom come from you and your word, not from selfish desires. Father, forgive us for our selfish desires. We only want what you desire. Father, for any desires that is not to lift your name, Father, we lay them at your feet. We lay down our families, our friends, our situation. Come on, church, if you have something to bring at the feet of Jesus today, it is not your weight to carry. It is not your weight to carry. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus, church, as we start to wrap up our prayers, come on, you can keep praying for yourself. You can keep praying for your families. You can keep praying for whoever you'd like. Just give it to God. We are praying to God. We are praying to, to Abba Father. We give this to you. We give this to you. We're gonna end all together, church. We're gonna we're gonna end all together in a second. We're gonna say it together. We're gonna go a little. I love it. We're gonna do more traditions here. Come on, say it with me, church. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us and deliver us from evil. Father, we pray for every prayer request today. We lift them up to you. Come on, give it to God this morning. We lift up to you our problems, our situations. We want to say thank you for the opportunity to pray today. We're sorry if we haven't been praying lately, Father. May today be a start of a new good habit. Father, may we rejoice always in our prayers. Father, may we never stop praying. May you give us the, the strength and the courage to never stop praying. Father, may we pray through all the circumstances. Because greater is he. Father, we lift up to you every single member here. Every member that is not able to make it today. We pray for everyone watching online. We pray for our past members. Father, we're praying for our new members. Father, we're praying for the new occupants of these chairs. We're praying for the old occupants of these chairs. Father, we are praying for your people. Deliver us from evil. Father, be with us throughout this week in all that we do as we finish off school, as we go back to work, as we grind it out every day with you, Father. May your presence be known. May, may, may starting today, we become more reliable so we can, we can bring this city to you. Mississauga is your city, Father. May we bring it together in Jesus' name. Everybody say. Amen, amen. Amen. Something like that. We're going to move to tithes and offering now. Um, but before we get into that, how many of us are refreshed from the time of prayer? Amen? I know I was. Praise God. Um, yeah, so the same, uh, the same thing applies here for tithes and offering. You know, rejoice always. Uh, pray continuously and with um, all circumstances, you know, let's be grateful. Uh, I think I butchered that last part. <laughs> but in the same way, let's keep that posture in our heart to give, you know, and that we're not just sowing into nothing. We're sowing into the kingdom of God. And we're sowing into his building here, his church here. Amen. And so we have a lot of things that we have uh, fundraising for, a lot of things that we're looking to do here. There's a lot of building maintenances that we have going on here and I was just showing one of our church members the other day of where we started from here at Christ for Life did you know that the floor here when we started was concrete <laughs> the floor and the stage here was all wooden and uh, the chairs that you're sitting on are were not the ones that we were sitting on back then the Lord has done such a great work over the years here at Christ for Life Ministries. And this is just the beginning, amen? And all of this happened because the people of God came together. The people of God came together under his name with a grateful heart in their tithes and their offering. And we were blessed and there's more blessings to come and we want to uh, maintain and steward what God has blessed us with. And so as we uh, give today, let's... Uh, Let's have a grateful heart and know that when we come together, that God is just going to just do mighty things through his people, unified. All right, let's close our eyes and bow our heads as we pray for the offering. Father God, I thank you today, Lord, uh, just for the, the tithes and the offering that we have for you, Lord. I pray, God, that we would have a grateful heart as we give to you, Lord, knowing that you are worthy, Lord. Just like we were singing in worship today, God, you are worthy, Father God. You are worthy, Father God. We, may we just be so uh, rejoiceful knowing that, God, that we get to bless you. We get to give a tithe and an offering to you, God, a, a physical, tangible uh, offering to you, Lord, that you receive, Lord. So bless the tithe and offering, God. I pray that you would meet every situation that we are in, God, uh, as we seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, O Lord. All these things shall be added unto us. And so, Father God, you know our needs, and I pray that you would meet every single need that we have, O oh Lord. Uh, and God, that we would just know that we are sowing into the kingdom of God. Something eternal, something that no one can touch, a God, but you.
And so, Father, we love you and we thank you and we uh, bless us today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, uh, Sister Suzanne and Sister Helena is at the back. If you have a physical offering, you can just wave your hands over. Uh, we also have e-transfer, so you can e-transfer us to our email, which is info at christforlife.ca. And under, you see in the picture here, it says add in memo. You have tithes, the food bank, church van, persevere in my mission in the Philippines, uh, overflow, which is a month away. We are raising $3,100, and I believe we are about four eighty five five hundred dollars dollars uh, raised so uh, yeah we're still raising funds for that we're going to be selling food at the, the back for that as well but these are things that you can give into and uh, also the food bank has a, another e-transfer email which is info at goodmeasurefoodbank.com you can give a check payable to Christ for Life Ministries and if you're going to mail it to us our address is 3607 Wolfdale Road, Mississauga, Ontario L5C Got it. You're next. <laughs> All right. So this is ties and offering. We're gonna move to announcements now. So I'll just go into our weekly announcements up there on the screen. You can see that we have a food bank going on from Tuesday to Saturday. Pickups are from Tuesday to Friday. We meet here at 10:30 a.m. So we're looking for people who can, who are willing and can drive with a driver's license. A G driver's license, life. Um, uh, people to help us pick up as well. We also have appointments on Thursdays and Saturdays. Uh, Thursdays, 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. technically to 3 p.m. And Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 12 uh, noon. And so that these are the weekly announcements for the food bank. On Thursdays, we have a prayer line. If you're not already connected, uh, just please see. Me or Pastor Jar will get you plugged in to our weekly email. And uh, the conference number to join the, those calls are on that email. And uh, yes, we have Friday journey class and youth at 6.30 every week. And we have a couple of events uh, coming up. So we have May 12, we have our Mother's Day service, our Women's Day service. So come out for that. Come bring your family. It's going to be a great time of just dining together. And also May 24 to 25th, we have our, oh, sorry, what's this? Yes, okay, guys, okay. Are you with me? Awesome. Next week, so next Sunday, there's going to be a marathon and there's going to be a road closure uh, up there on the screen, you can see closed westbound lanes here on Ontario Street to Aaron Mills Parkway. Um, so, like this, even this Burnham Thorpe Road is going to be closed. So, uh, if you're coming from other ends, just uh, Dundas is your friend. Yeah, find a way to go on to Dundas because that is going to be the way to get into here. Uh, so, th just a heads up again. The, there's going to be road closures next Sunday, so please find alternative routes to get to church. Uh, there's a website. You can just write Mississauga Marathon, and it, it will show you what roads are closed. And so this is very important that we want to yeah, tell you. It's, so it's from 7 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. You're more than welcome to camp out at our parking lot at 6.30 a.m. <laughs> we are uh, hiring for uh, a Canada summer job. We got the government grant, everyone. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is a big miracle for that. We are we have five spots for students. So I believe if you're a student under 30, uh, you can just come and apply here at, at the church. Uh, and, yeah, if you want to find out more information about that, you can see our very own Sister Jean. Can you raise your hand? Sister Jean, can you raise your hand? Yeah, you can come and see her about that job if you're a student under 30. So, favor, favor from the Lord, straight favor. <laughs> and also, yeah, we have a save the date. We want to give you guys a heads up all the way to November. We are celebrating 30 years of God's faithfulness, unshakable faithfulness here at Christ for Life Ministries. 30 years. Wow, that's all. That's a big number. <laughs> Hi, Pastor Jar. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is Sunday, November 24, 9.30 a.m., here at 3607 Wolfdale Road, Mississauga, Ontario. 
Coming up in the month ahead, we have, um, we can go to the next one now. We'll go to... We got we got a volunteer, praise the Lord. Um, all right, yeah. So May twenty fourth to twenty fifth, uh, we have an event, a conference, a women's conference called Always Sisters. It is fifty dollars a ticket. You can come and see Sister Jean again for that conference. And in the same days, we have the uh, Overflow Youth Conference, and that is yeah again May twenty fourth to twenty fifth. So. Women's, you got a day, and kids and youth leaders, you got a day to uh, just get closer with God. And men, like the message today, pray. <laughs> and so these are your announcements today, and uh, yeah, let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father God, we thank you so much today for the message. Lord, we thank you for everybody that was here to make it. Father, it is not a mis mistake. It is not a coincidence, God. I pray, Lord, that we would just take heed to the word that was given today, Lord, to rejoice always to pray continuously, God, to just, Father God, in all circumstances, God, pr to praise you, Lord, to praise you, Lord, because God, you are worth it, Father, and when we give our praises to you, when we give our burdens to you, when we give everything to you, Lord, we know that and we experience that, that light burden, that easy yoke, Father, and so God, I pray that you just bring comfort, healing and whatever prayer needs uh, that are present here in this room and online today God I pray that you would just meet them where they are at God I pray that you would reach their hearts Father bless us today oh God may we just continue to take this uh, week ahead oh God just to rejoice in you always and to just praise you always God we love you and we thank you Lord just name we pray amen uh, if you are a first timer you just listen